So this is a model of graphene, a single sheet of graphite. It has some absolutely amazing properties, even though it's a sheet of what we would normally think is common graphite, the stuff in our pencils. Uh, a single sheet has some very, very interesting properties. So let me show you a bit more about graphene. Um, normally, we think of carbon, the two allotropes of carbon that we all know about are diamond and graphite. In diamond, each atom is surrounded by four neighbours in a sort of tetrahedral structure, a very strong structure. But the other form of carbon that we know about is graphite, um, the sort of thing that you draw with the, the stuff in a pencil is graphite. It's sheets of atoms uh, in forming hexagon sheets, one on top of the other. Uh, and graphite is, uh, both these materials are very, very important uh, materials, of course, because they're uh, diamonds, obviously, because they're extremely valuable, but actually graphite is a very important industrial material. It's put in oil, for example, in petrol to help lubricate, and of course in pencils. It turns out that if you can uh, extract a single sheet from a layer of uh, graphite, so for example, at the back here, we've got a picture of what graphite could be. Uh, lots and lots of sheets of carbon atoms, one on top of the other. If you can just take off one of these sheets, so you've got a single sheet of graphite, it's called graphene. And uh, the scientists who first did this properly did it incredibly simply. They basically got a bit of sellotape, put it on a bit of graphite, peeled off the sellotape to get rid of the rubbish on top of the crystal, put another bit of sellotape on, peeled off millions and millions of layers of graphite, and then by bringing the sellotape together and parting it, they kept on splitting the layers of graphite until they were actually able to make a single sheet of graphene by sellotape and graphite. And uh, they were actually able to make graphene that way. Now, industrially, you don't use sellotape and uh, graphite anymore, but you can actually make that. So in principle, every kid who's ever drawn with a, uh, a piece of pencil on a piece of paper has probably uh, sheets of atoms have come off and probably some of them just now and again were a single sheet of graphene. So it's amazing to think that kids for hundreds of years have been making graphene probably just by sketching. Um, it has some very interesting properties. Let's talk a little bit about the mass. It turns out that the number of atoms in the structure is given by a set, very simple rule, 6n squared. The number of concentric rings squared times 6 will give you an, uh, an idea of how many atoms there are in a hexagon sheet of graphene. Uh, more of that on another video. Um, has some very, very interesting properties. Uh, just to remind you how small these things are, the bonds are less than a nanometer from one atom to the other. So that's a less than a thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And of course, the atoms come together to form sheets. Three million graphene sheets, one on top of the other, to form a, a crystal of graphite would only be one millimeter thick. So we forget how small these things are. But actually, if you can prize off a single layer of graphite, it has amazing properties. One of the things is it, it has surprisingly good electrical properties. It's as if when the current goes through the structure, the electrons pair up. They actually call them Dirac pairs. So they actually give a name to the way the electrons pair up. They, as if they behave as if they're almost another type of particle. And they go through the graphite with incredible ease so that the conductivity of graphite is pretty much the best of any material in the world. And scientists have now been able to make sheets of this graphite and look at the electrical properties, and they've made transistors out of this stuff. OK, we've got transistors already with the silicon technology, but these are much, much, much smaller than existing transistors. And they're just made from a carbon. And we can probably fine-tune the number of hexagons and the shape of the graphene structure to fine-tune the properties of these transistors. So they look like they're going to have amazing, amazing properties. And because of all the excitement of the chemistry and the physics of this new material, and actually being able to make it and predict the properties, the Nobel Prize for Physics was given to the, uh, for a group of scientists in 2010 for uh, the development of graphene. If you want to know more information, check out my website.